Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown, and I'm uh, going to take a quick review on the Samsung Odyssey HMD Mixed Reality headset. And if you haven't seen my unboxing already, uh, click up here and uh, you'll be able to see that. But I'm going to do a brief overview of this and its competitors, test setup, a uh, bit of uh, footage on what it's like, and uh, then of course conclude. So um, what is uh, Mixed Reality? Well, it's the same as uh, Virtual Reality. It enables you to put on the headset and you are put into a virtual space. Now, compared to having a phone put on yeah, and the goggles, you don't have any, uh, it's called six degrees of freedom. So when you're moving around, you don't get any closer to the objects you're looking at. Now, in, this actually has tracking by two cameras in here. And as you move uh, around in the space, it determines where you are and uh, you move in that virtual room too. So, and it, it works very well. Uh, conversely, you also have uh, controllers, which allow you to also communicate with the headset and allows you to interact with objects in the game and move around in the game. So it gives you a big virtual world. Uh, competing headsets, of course, are things like the uh, HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift. And uh, these, and also the PlayStation headset here, they use cameras to help with the, uh, the, the tracking base stations up in the corner of the room or other cameras dotted about and they communicate and they... But the problem is it's extra things to carry around if you wanted to do a quick demo with somebody. With, with the mixed reality headset here, you've just got this and your laptop and your way to go. Pack it in one bag and you're good to go to do a demo. And I think that's fantastic. Um, it's looking at the, uh, the, the quality of it. It's, um, <clears throat> it's solid plastic and it has uh, taken a drop off the table and it survived nicely. You have a wheel here at the back here to adjust the mechanism here to fit it onto your head. You have a wheel at the bottom here which alters the, uh, the distance of the lenses. You have um, volume controls here which work great for the inbuilt uh, headphones here. They're made by AKG and they're very adjustable. So not only does the, the head itself wear adjust around, they also slide up and down on a rail and they also adjust side to side. So that works well. And um, <clears throat> the padding, it's foam padding, but it's covered in PVC and that's all around, including the headset, I mean headphones. So it's easy to wipe off clean now compared to the, uh, the Vive, which had foam padding, which would suck in the, uh, the any moisture. So. So swapping around between family members and friends, it's a bit more hygienic really in a way, so much better. The controllers are bigger than on the, I suppose on the Vive in terms of this radius thing, you know, that it's a little bit more cumbersome, but it feels okay in the hand. And controlling wise, you've got a thumbstick here, so tapping it forward or wherever, it'll move you slightly in that direction a bit, bit a little bit. Pressing it forward and holding it there would make a beam of light fire forward and then you can sort of like uh, zoom to that point. You've got a touchpad here, which is good in game. You can see a, a little white dot showing where your thumb is. And uh, you can use that to navigate through menus, scrolling on the internet, that type of thing. Uh, you've got a menu button and a, a Windows Home button, which is great because in game, you can press it. It can bring up uh, various apps, which you can use to then pin on your walls. And also uh, you can take photographs or video within game and share that uh, you know, with your friends. And I think that is great to be able to do that within the game or within the environment itself. You have a, a trigger button here at the top, used for shooting if you're playing a shooting game um, or uh, you know, interacting with things. And you've got a grasp button here to, to pick things up. And of course, you've got a safety strap here in case you, you know, it flies off, <laughs> flies off your wrist. So that's, uh, it's not too bad. Of course, you get, you get two of them. Uh, now, tracking wise, it's okay, it's not as good as the uh, the Vive was because you don't have those uh, base stations. Um, it communicates directly with the headset and uh, if it's getting a bit obstructed, perhaps down here or something like that, it sometimes will uh, you'll lose it. But all in all, it's not that bad at all. Now, pricing wise, this is $500 and all you, you get is the headset and the controllers, that's it, nice and easy. You get five, uh, $500, now you do get uh, Two displays, the AMOLED displays, very good quality, uh, 110 degrees field of view. It's a great immersion. And the audio quality from the, the headset is good. And you have two inbuilt microphones. And the footage I show 
uses those microphones, so you'll be able to hear what it's like. Now, Acer and uh, other computer manufacturers have them uh, too. Uh, now, typically, they're less uh, field of view. So, for example, the Acer one has uh, 100 degrees field of view, and um, so it's not quite as immersive, and it doesn't have inbuilt uh, headphones uh, either. Now, big difference though, the, uh, the Acer uses HDMI 1.4, this uh, Samsung one uses uh, HDMI 2.0. Now that might make a big difference to you depending on what laptop you have. Um, only the pups and newer ones might have HDMI 2.0, so that's worth checking out. And, uh, you know, in terms of build quality compared to the rest, you know, it's not as solid as the, the Vive, but it's, you know, it's solid enough and it's easy enough to put on. So you just, I just extend it out and I put it on. Now it did say in the specs, not, not recommended with the glasses, but I can't see with these, uh, without these things. So, but it works fine for me. Put it on like that, tighten it up as far as you can, and then adjust the headphones so they go over your ears. And then you can move around quite, quite strongly and it doesn't, uh, doesn't come off. You know, and I played for a few hours and it, it didn't feel uncomfortable uh, one bit. I mean, it adds a bit of a weight to it, but it uh, didn't feel uncomfortable. So um, let's take a look at its setup. When the app starts, this is what you see. So you uh, agree and it goes through the system spec. You're good to go. You then click next. And then it uh, shows you uh, what the, uh, you know, the uh, HMD headset looks like. So you've got the tracking sensors there on the front. Um, you have two microphones. You have the focal adjustment, which is the IPD adjustment there at the front, as well as the two headphones and the headband adjustment to make it fit well on your head. Next is setting up your controllers. So it gives you a brief description of what uh, each function does. So the trackpad, uh, the thumbstick, uh, the menu button, um, windows button, the grab button, trigger button, and so forth. So you put the batteries into the controller and then uh, you must press the Windows button start to start off with to power it on and then uh, press the little button for two seconds there below the batteries and that activates uh, the Bluetooth and that all will uh, pair the controllers. Next is choosing your setup, either standing up still or sitting down or a room scale situation whereby you clear a space and you need uh, a minimum of five by seven foot. You start off by pointing the headset at the computer screen to uh, center it. You then trace out your room whilst keeping the headset facing the monitor. You then allow the Mixed Reality app to work with speech input. So once that's done, you're ready to put your headset on. All right, so once you've uh, done your setup, you greet it to your big mansion, open air uh, room uh, house like this. and. Uh, the audio you're hearing is through the microphones picked up in the, the headset. So you have these tiles on the walls, which you can configure, you click on it to open them up. You can configure the size, you can make them bigger, or you can even suspend them in the air, or whatever you want to do. You got some fun things, for example, like these uh, holograms, you click here. Like for example, this dog here, or a guy cycling around on a bike. There you go. So moving about, um, using the uh, the thumbstick, moving it, jabbing it forward or back or side to side, will move you around a bit, a bit at a time. Or you can push hard press it and you can teleport like that. So moving around is easy. And you'll see the various tiles on the walls. Um, of course, you'll see a lot of uh, ones which are Microsoft Store. You click on it and you can go to it. And uh, there's various, uh, obviously, headings. Now, there's no heading for uh, VR, but you can search. And it brings up a keyboard, which is great like this. So if you just type in VR. And you can browse it all here. So that works fairly well. And of course, all these windows, you can move them around. You can have them suspended in midair. 
you can also adjust the size. You can pin them onto various other walls, like there. And you're good to go. Now, the Xbox tile shows you where all your games are. So it's a nice way of keeping track of where all your games are. So let's look at uh, Gun Spinning VR. So this is a Western style first person shooter game. The uh, thing on the controllers uh, is a little bit hit and miss. Sometimes uh, the guns would uh, just disappear, but still it works fairly well. Now, one thing I did like on here is that is the desktop. So this is what you see on your on your on your desktop, and of course you can alter the size of it. And the text is great. So it's for go great for just you know quickly seeing what is showing on your computer. If somebody's calling you on your, on Skype, for instance, you can have a quick look. But of course they won't be able to see you too well on your camera because you don't know which way you you're facing. Now and another thing I do like is the internet. And you can do voice uh, command. So, hey Cortana, open Bing. There you go. So that works uh, fairly well. And I say the internet does look pretty good. So, thanks. Uh, you got the keyboard. That a good predictive text. If scrolling works well, although the, the keyboard is a bit annoying, it does pop up occasionally. The text does look very sharp, and uh, there's, there's a little bit of screen door effect, but not as much as the uh, as with the Vive. Now the cable is like the Vive; it's about seven foot long, and it does tangle around your leg a little bit, so you got to be careful. And there's no pass-through camera like you get on the Vive to see your your, your surroundings, so that is a shame. Um, but Let's explore a little bit more around this house. In here, we've got a movie room, which is good. You can either have it open air, or you can have it enclosed like that. And uh, basically, it's your movies uh, app on your on your on your computer. You can explore and do um, watch trailers and this type of stuff. And again, I think the resolution is good, much better than it is on a Vive. And the field of view, I think, is very good as well. So let's continue looking at uh, here. Because there's uh, one game uh, I played here, so let's uh, see what this one's about. Rocks and Rails. This game has you uh, going on either the blue or the orange rail, which you can jump between the two, dodging uh, enemies and shooting enemies in the sky. And it was good, there's no locomotion uh, sickness here at all, so um, it works very well. There is going to be Steam VR support. But you get that. You get an error message. So that is a shame. So you can uh, put other apps on these walls. So, for instance, uh, your calendar, you can uh, you can put that on. Um, so you don't just have to have the store or these uh, holograms. You can have your own uh, apps put on here, which is uh, very nice uh, to have. You also have uh, tiles to show your photographs. You do have to be careful with some games you buy in the store 
Um, for example, no gravity, it's not VR, it plays on a like window you can attach to your wall, uh, so there's uh, no uh, support through the, uh, the controllers you have. You can use an Xbox controller and play it as if it's on a large TV, but it's something to bear in mind. But dedicated VR games such as Space Pirate Trainer work very well. Tracking is pretty similar to the HTC Vive. The headset tracking, fantastic. The only gripe is the shield sometimes will disappear um, due to uh, lack of tracking on the controllers, but still, I think it's still very good. Right, well, to conclude, I think, I think it's a very good uh, headset. You know, $500, it's, 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 it's perhaps a little bit pricey, but you've got to bear in mind, you, can, uh, you don't have uh, those extra cameras, and uh, you can... Uh, you know, the cost of entry in terms of laptop or computer you can use it on is lower. Um, if you want to play the, uh, the VR games, a GTX 1050 or an AMD RX 460 is required. But you can just do the general um, mixed reality uh, things within your own room. You know, watch your movies, photos, go on the internet, this type of thing. And you only need an Intel HD 620 there. So that is pretty good. But on that basis, if you're going that route, I would probably stick with uh, perhaps a, a cheaper one and perhaps use your own headset. But, you know, they, they certainly get their job done and it's, it's very, very nice. Um, of course, the prices of the, uh, the Vive and the Rift have come way down. Uh, it used to be $800. The Vive you can get for $600 now. And the tracking is better on the, on, on the Vive for sure uh, when you're playing the games. Now, the, um, the Rift, that could be a compelling option now. You can buy that for $400 and an extra camera is uh, $60, so pretty comparable to this. And you will get, um, you'll get better, you'll probably get more games support on that at the moment. Now, big thing though, the mixed reality platform is gonna ha will have Steam VR support. So all the games you can get on the Vive, you'll be able to get on uh, the mixed reality, and that is a, is a huge plus. So anyway, I think that's a, it's, a, it's a great quality headset. I think uh, another good thing was reading text, fantastic. Um, very clear. Browsing the internet was much better than on the Vive. You know, you got your desktop there, or you got the apps showing the showing Bing and whatnot. You could read everything clearly, and in game, all text was clear too. That adds to the immersion, and I think that is a big thumbs up. So anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you next time.